Amen is an American sitcom created by Carson Production and broadcasted on NBC from September 1986 to May 1991. The series ran for a continuous five seasons, delivering a total of 110 captivating episodes. Starring the iconic king of sitcoms, Sherman Hemsley as the deacon of a church named Ernest Fry, a widower who also serves as a lawyer, the narrative unfolds in his hometown of Philadelphia. Amen emerged as one of the triumphant sitcoms of the 1980s, standing out with an all-black cast. The show garnered a substantial fan base, resulting in impressive ratings. Notably, Amen played a pivotal role in paving the way for several successful sitcoms featuring black casts. Undoubtedly, Amen stands as one of the paramount sitcoms of its time. This television gem showcased remarkable storytelling and character dynamics. In this video, we'll pay tribute to some of the cast members who have left us. On our channel, we bring you a variety of videos. Don't forget to express your appreciation by liking and subscribing for more captivating content. Stay tuned for additional features on the legacy of beloved TV shows and the talents who brought them to life. Jester Hairston. Jester Hairston portrayed Raleigh Forbes, the wise senior citizen and voice of reason at the church in the sitcom. Jester Hairston, aged 98, a familiar face from radio and TV's Amos and Andy, and renowned as the sagacious church member Raleigh on the sitcom Amen, passed away on January 18th in Los Angeles. The cause of death has not been disclosed. Mr. Hairston, the grandson of a former slave, carved a niche as a black character actor, frequently appearing as a domestic servant or in multiple Tarzan films, as a jungle dweller delivering lines like Buana, Buana. Despite criticism in later years for roles that perpetuated racial stereotypes, including his work on Amos and Andy, Hairston remained unapologetic, asserting that he accepted available opportunities and contributed to opening doors for future black actors. Amen, boasting a predominantly black cast, achieved recognition as the first successful television sitcom centered on religion when it premiered in 1986. It continued airing until 1991, featuring Mr. Hairston in the role of the witty Roly Forbes. Transitioning to New York, he encountered Hall Johnson, a renowned conductor of Negro spirituals, becoming his assistant. In 1935, Mr. Hairston accompanied the choir to California, and found a breakthrough when Dmitry Tiomkin invited him to conduct the choir in the 1936 film Lost Horizon, earning an Oscar for Best Score. This marked the beginning of a two-decade collaboration with Tiomkin, inspiring him to establish the first integrated choir for films, contributing to productions like Red River, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, and Land of the Pharaohs. When not engaged in musical arrangements, Hairston sought other opportunities, he secured minor roles in movies, portraying African natives in Tarzan films and assuming butler roles in various productions. His later film credits encompassed notable works such as To Kill a Mockingbird, In the Heat of the Night, Lady Sings the Blues, and Being John Malkovich. In his pursuit of radio roles, Hairston recounted adapting his speech to fit the expectations, including shedding his Boston accent and mastering phrases like Yasu. His Bostonian articulation served him well when cast as Henry Van Porter, the society man from Black Society, who mocked the antics of Amos and Andy. Additionally, he portrayed the less refined Leroy, Kingfish's brother-in-law, Montrose Hagens, Montrose Hagens, another pivotal figure in the sitcom Amen, has left us. Hagens, renowned as Leola Forbes, Raleigh's wife from 1989 to 1991, held a special place in the hearts of sitcom enthusiasts. She either starred in or made guest appearances on numerous well-loved television series, including Seinfeld, Rock, 227, The Golden Girls, Sister, Sister, The Hewleys, The Jamie Foxx Show, What's Happening Now, The Sinbad Show, Touched by an Angel, and the famous Jet Jackson. 
Notably, she assumed the role of Leola Henderson Forbes, succeeding Rosetta Lenoir in the final season of Amen. Her television journey extended to guest spots on ER, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Hunter, Malcolm and Eddie, and Moesha, along with a recurring role in Homefront, a series set in post-World War II Ohio. Haggins, one of five siblings and the daughter of an Episcopal minister, transitioned to acting from her role as a fourth-grade teacher at Williams Elementary School. A steadfast friend of veteran African-American character actresses Rosetta Lenoir and Esther Roll, she embraced various roles while also being a dedicated member of St. Augustine's Episcopal Church in Gary, Indiana. Her community involvement extended to serving as a board member for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, showcasing her commitment to philanthropy. Beyond her artistic pursuits, she advocated for liberal democratic values and African-American rights. In 2005, she bid farewell to her acting career, choosing to spend her remaining years in an antique farmhouse in Pennsylvania. Known for her real estate portfolio, Hagen's owned four homes, including summer and fall houses in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, two residences in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, and a home in her hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina. Her final resting place is at Green Hills Memorial Park in Rancho Palos Verdes, California. Sherman Hemsley. Sherman Hemsley graced the show as the central figure. Deacon Ernest Fry, a widowed deacon of the inaugural Community Church in Philadelphia. In the series, he embodies the character of a deceitful and mischievous individual. Actor Sherman Hemsley, renowned for his involvement in the original Broadway cast of Pearly and celebrated for portraying George Jefferson in the beloved comedy series The Jeffersons, has passed away at the age of 74, as reported by People magazine. Originally hailing from South Philadelphia, Hemsley left high school to enlist in the Air Force before returning to Philadelphia, where he worked for the U.S. Postal Service while attending acting classes at night. After showcasing his talent with local groups in Philadelphia, Hemsley made his Broadway debut as Gitlo in Purley. While touring with the production, television writer and producer Lear approached Hemsley to undertake the role of Jefferson in his new sitcom, All in the Family. Initially hesitant, Hemsley ultimately accepted, and two years later, he joined the cast. Shortly thereafter, he and Isabel Sanford, his All in the Family co-star, received their spin-off, The Jeffersons. This series garnered Hemsley Emmy and Golden Globe nominations in 1984 and 1985. In 1986, Hemsley took on the role of Deacon Ernest Fry in the NBC series Amen, which ran for five seasons, concluding in 1991. Hemsley was also a professional singer, releasing a single titled Ain't That a Kick in the Head on Sutra Record in 1989. In 1992, he ventured into R&B with an album titled Dance. Despite retiring from television acting, Hemsley made sporadic appearances alongside Sanford in the late 90s and early 2000s, reprising their iconic roles as George and Louise Wheezy Jefferson. The duo graced the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and featured in commercials for Old Navy, Gap, and Denny's. Hemsley had no spouse or offspring, Rosetta Lenoir. Rosetta Lenoir played a significant role in most parts of the sitcom as Leola Forbes from 1987 to 1999, serving as Raleigh's romantic interest before eventually becoming his wife. On March 17, 2002, Lenoir passed away at Holy Name Hospital in Teaneck, New Jersey, due to complications related to diabetes, although TV Guide reported pneumonia as the cause of death. At the time of her demise, she was 90 years old and a resident of the Lillian Booth Actors Home in Englewood, New Jersey. Born in Harlem, New York City, Lenoir was the eldest of five children with Harold Burton from Dominica and Nimarie Edith Jacques Helwig from Jamaica in the West Indies as her parents. Overcoming rickets in her youth with the help of her godfather Bill Bojangles Robinson, who taught her to dance, Lenoir developed a passion for stage theater. She performed in the Federal Theater Project's Basamuna, 
and played a witch in Orson Welles' 1936 production of Macbeth. Dedicated to the cause of racial equity for over 70 years, Lenoir left a lasting impact on the New York theater community. In 1968, she established the Amos Repertory Theater Company in New York City, utilizing her own savings. This interracial theater aimed at producing multi-ethnic productions and fostering an artistic community that recognized individual skills without considering race, creed, color, religion, or national origin. Lenoir achieved success as a pioneering Broadway producer. Acknowledging her contribution to the diversification of theater casting, the Actors' Equity Association presented Lenoir with the first-ever award in 1988, later named the Rosetta Lenoir Award. The AMA's Repertory Theater, under her guidance, provided a supportive environment for actors and served as a community performing arts center. Throughout its existence, the company's productions received favorable reviews in the New York Times. The theater's initial headquarters were situated at 1 East 104th Street in the uptown neighborhood of East Harlem. Elsa Raven Elsa Raven is recognized for her two-year portrayal as Inga, the Swedish housekeeper of Deacon, in the sitcom Amen. The actress, best known for her iconic role as the Save the Clock Tower Lady in Back to the Future, has passed away at the age of 91. Raven died at her residence in Los Angeles on Tuesday, as confirmed by her agent, David Schall, to Deadline. Born Elsa Rabinowitz in September 1929, the actress had a lengthy career as a character actress, initially making her mark on stage before transitioning to notable Hollywood films. Her debut film role occurred in 1970 with The Honeymoon Killers, followed by appearances in The Amityville Horror, where she portrayed the realtor, the John Malkovich film, in The Line of Fire and The Moderns, where she embodied Gertrude Stein. Raven also had a role in James Cameron's Titanic, although many of her scenes ended up on the cutting room floor. Notably, she can still be glimpsed in the film as Ida Strauss, one part of the older couple facing the sinking ship. Her television credits include appearances on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Seinfeld, Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, Amen, and Wise Guy. Her final cinematic performance took place in 2011's Answers to Nothing, where she portrayed a character named Mrs. Harrison. Raven, a voting member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, as per Variety, is survived by her sister-in-law, Lynn Rabinowitz, and her 15 nieces and nephews, James Avery. James Avery also graced the set of Amen, portraying the character of Reverend Tom Crawford. James Avery passed away on December 31, 2013, at Glendale Memorial Medical Center, succumbing to complications arising from open-heart surgery. He departed at the age of 68. It was noted that James faced severe coronary heart disease, end-stage kidney disease, and type 2 diabetes. Born as James LaRue Avery in Virginia, Avery grew up in Atlantic City. Following high school, he served in the Vietnam War from 1968 to 1969 as a member of the U.S. Navy. Upon his return, Avery relocated to San Diego, where he delved into writing poetry and TV scripts for PBS, contributing to the Emmy Award-winning production, Ameda Speaks, poet James Avery. However, Avery became most cherished for his acting. Alongside his iconic role on the sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he lent his voice to various animated TV series, such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Iron Man. Avery also graced the big screen in films like Dr. Doolittle 2 and Licensed to Drive and hosted the travel series Going Places on PBS. In his latest endeavors, Avery collaborated on Zach Braff's film Wish I Was Here, set to premiere at the Sundance Film Festival. Alfonso Ribeiro, his co-star from Fresh Prince, expressed his deep sorrow, tweeting, I'm deeply saddened to say that James Avery has passed away. He was a second father to me. I will miss him greatly. 
Avery leaves behind his wife of 26 years, Barbara, his stepson, Kevin Waters, and his mother, Florence. Lawanda Page. Lawanda Page portrayed the character Darla in the series. Renowned actress and comedian Lawanda Page, famed for her role as the resilient, Bible-carrying Aunt Esther on the popular 1970s TV comedy Sanford and Son, passed away at the age of 81, as announced by her agent on Tuesday. Page, who in later years engaged in TV commercials and teamed up in a stand-up comedy act with blaxploitation film star Rudy Ray Moore, known as Dolomite, died on Saturday at Sentinella Hospital in Los Angeles due to complications from diabetes, according to agent Star Will Reed. Even in the current year, Page graced the stage in a wheelchair for a revival of the musical comedy Inquest of Sam Cooke, portraying the hotel manager responsible for the mysterious 1964 shooting death of the soul singer. Hailing from Cleveland and raised in St. Louis, Paige initially embarked on her career as a dancer and chorus girl, billed as the bronze goddess of fire, before transitioning to stand-up comedy. On NBC's Sanford and Son, where Fox starred as Fred Sanford, an irritable old junk dealer with his grown son and business partner Lamont, portrayed by Demon Wilson having loftier aspirations, Paige assumed the supporting role of Sanford's principled sister-in-law, Esther Anderson, the proprietor of the dilapidated Sanford Arms Rooming House adjacent to the junkyard. She remained with the show until its conclusion in 1977 with Fox's departure, later returning as the co-star of the short-lived spin-off, The Sanford Arms. Page also made guest appearances on Fox's variety show on ABC and his brief 1980 attempt to revive his earlier sitcom as Sanford. Fox passed away in 1991. Whitman Mayo. Whitman Mayo assumes the role of Swifty in Amen. Renowned actor Whitman Mayo, celebrated for his portrayal of Grady on the 1970s popular TV series Sanford and Son, passed away on Tuesday in Atlanta, Georgia, due to a heart attack. He was 70 years old. Mayo had been in the hospital for the past two months, dealing with a hernia, according to a statement from the family. He passed away at 5.15 a.m. while being transferred from one hospital to another. Mayo dedicated over 30 years to the television and film industry. He rose to prominence as the amiable character Grady Wilson on Sanford and Son, known for his distinctive catchphrase, Good Goobly Goop. Recently, Mayo hosted the original weekly series, Liars and Legends, on Turner South, and served as an adjunct professor at Clark Atlanta University, teaching a film theater class. Turner South mourns the loss of Whitman Mayo, expressed David Rudolph vice president and general manager of Turner South. Mayo's TV credits include Different Strokes, In the Heat of the Night, Trapper John, M.D., and The Cape. His filmography features John Singleton's Boys in the Hood and The Main Event with Barbara Streisand. He is survived by his wife of 28 years, Gail Reed Mayo and three adult children, Earl Bowen, Earl Bowen took on the role of Dr. Carter in the TV show. Earl Bowen, renowned for his appearances in the Terminator film series, has reportedly passed away at the age of 81. According to TMZ and Variety, the seasoned actor died on Thursday in Hawaii. While an immediate cause of death was not disclosed, a close friend of Bowen's and his family informed the latter publication that he received a diagnosis of stage 4 lung cancer last fall. Bowen made his initial television appearances in the 1970s, securing roles in series such as Kojak, Hawaii 5 Wonder Woman, and more, before earning a recurring role on Mama's Family in the 1980s. Throughout that decade, he graced series like It's a Living, Family Ties, Growing Pains, Star Trek The Next Generation, and L.A. Law, making his debut in the Terminator franchise with the first film in 1984. Continuing his role, Bowen reprised Dr. Peter Silberman in the next two Terminator films, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, 1991, and Terminator 3, 
Rise of the Machines, 2003, the latter marking his final on-screen appearance. In the later stages of his career, Bowen starred in films like Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, and Now You Know, while making appearances on series such as Ellen and The West Wing. After retiring from live-action roles, Bowen, recognized for his deep baritone voice, continued to contribute his voice to various media, including the World of Warcraft video game series. His voice work also extended to Clifford the Big Red Dog, Spider-Man, the animated series, Kim Possible, and the fantastic voyages of Sinbad the Sailor. Bowen was preceded in death by his wife Carol Keane, an actress to whom he was married from 1970 until her passing in 2001. He is survived by his wife Kathy, whom he married in 2008, according to a biography on IMDb, stepdaughter Ruby, and grandsons Kimi Abaricia and Kimo Harbin, as reported by Variety. Throughout this series, we've explored fascinating stories, delved into intriguing topics, and shared countless moments of laughter, inspiration, and learning. It's been an amazing ride, and we couldn't have done it without you. As we bid farewell to this chapter, we encourage you to reflect on the moments we've shared and the knowledge we've gained together. Remember that every ending is a new beginning, and the lessons learned will continue to resonate in our lives. As we sign off, remember to stay curious, stay inspired, and most importantly, stay awesome. Until we meet again in our future endeavors, take care and see you on the flip side.